Tim Scott is running for president. I'll give you my thoughts on that. More bad news about the FBI. I'll give you my thoughts on that. And Chadwick Moore joins us. He has some info about Tucker and the separation. You're going to want to hang on for that on I'm Right. You ever seen a fight? But but let me clarify, let me clarify. Everyone's seen a fight. Have you ever seen a fight where one person didn't seem to be aware they were about to be in a fight? And then once the fight started, they start getting hit. They seem to be so confused about, wait, we're fighting? You're hitting me? Jeez, this is real. Have you ever seen something like that? I've seen some of these, so many times in my life I've seen something like this. Some guys would be arguing back and forth, and then you see one guy very clearly has decided, we're getting ready to fight. And the other guy just has not. He thinks there's a discussion happening. We're just having a good discussion. And then the guy will throw a punch and hit him. And even still, the guy still thinks, wait a minute, hold on, this was a conversation. The guy who doesn't know he's in a fight and he's in a violent situation, that is the GOP. That is why we have lost cultural issue after cultural issue after cultural issue for decades. Because the GOP still seems to think it's the year 1900 and we're going to have a spirited debate and then we'll go play cribbage together because we all want what's best for America. And then the communists, the Democrats on the other side, they're busy putting glass inside of the tape on their knuckles because they know it's about to be on like Donkey Kong. That is the difference. And that brings me perfectly to the man who announced he's running for president today, Tim Scott. Now, we'll get to the why he announced he's running, why he's actually running. I'll get to that in a couple moments. But Tim Scott, it's just, he's everything. He should be the mascot for the GOP. Why? Because Tim Scott thinks we're just going to come together and unify, and we're going to heal these divisions. And don't you find it interesting the people that come out and voice support for guys like Tim Scott, people like Cory Booker? And Tim is a guy that has, we have a lot of shared life experiences. Two big, bald, black guys growing up in America have had similar experiences that are bad, run-ins with police officers, and similar experiences that are good growing up in really good black churches. What should people who are intrigued by his presidential aspirations, shall we call them, know about him? I mean, you know him on a personal level. I think that as I look at this Republican field, he may be one of those people that is underestimated. Why would Cory Booker come out and defend Tim Scott? Well, if you want to know Exhibit A for the fight analogy I used earlier, remember when St. George Floyd died? We all woke up, we looked at an internet video, it looked terrible, there's this black dude on the ground, the cops all got a knee on his back, he's calling for his mom, he's all sweaty and looking bad, and then he dies. And immediately the communists, as they always do, they took your emotions, the emotions you felt as you looked at that video, and they said, hey, we can use this, we can seize power, we can advance our agenda, and they pounced on it immediately. And immediately the system formed a national narrative, the cops are the enemy, defund the police, Give the cities back to the animals. That was the national narrative that was beginning to be formed. And the GOP, like they always do, instead of fighting against that narrative that has now killed untold numbers of Americans in cities when it's all said and done, instead of fighting against that narrative, the GOP said, where's, where's Tim Scott? Tim, you hate cops too, right? Hey, let's do some federal police reform. And Tim Scott went and joined with Cory Booker to decide federally just how much it was the fault of the cops that the urban black communities are a disaster in America. Helping the communists form the narrative. Taking the can of gasoline instead of the bottle of water and dumping it all over the flames of the new narrative they're forming. Again, thinks he's in a friendly game of cribbage. Just debate, look, we all want what's best. Instead of being the bare knuckles brawler it's going to take to defeat the communists in this nation. I'm gonna read you a quote, and I don't have to take anything out of context. This is Tim Scott's own quote 
from Tim Scott's own book. Do you want to know why Tim Scott can never be allowed to have real power beyond senator in this country? Certainly never anything to, like president. Do you want to know why? Here's Tim Scott in his own words. Chapter 9 from his book, Opportunity Knox is the name of the book. Eventually, we landed in a runoff against Paul Thurman. That meant two head-to-head -head debates. I do not use this word lightly, but I loathe debates. I am not a naturally combative person, and that showed in the first debate. Here's what I believe. I believe Tim Scott, having never met him, but I believe Tim Scott is probably a very decent human being. Probably a very solid man. Kind of guy you'd uh, allow to watch your kids for the weekend while you took off with the wife. I believe that all the way. But there are many, 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 many men I would allow watch, want to watch my sons for a weekend, but I know they're not ready to lead me into battle. And we are in a battle. The truth is, decent as I do believe he probably is, we don't have time for naivete like Tim Scott. We don't have time for, well, I'm not combative, guys. We don't have time while the Cheka arms itself against the political opponents of Democrats. We don't have time for somebody who says, let's just see how it all plays out. Do you think the FBI, do you still believe and trust in the FBI to do its job, even with a former president, uh, in a nonpartisan way? Or do you believe, as the, as the former president says, that the FBI is executing a witch hunt? And there's been lots of questions before this raid about whether or not the FBI is doing their job apolitical. And we don't know the answer to that question yet. This is probably gonna, about the FBI. This is going to raise more questions, in my opinion. We need to let this play out and see exactly what happens, but we should all have been stunned and surprised and shocked at what happened yesterday. You see what I mean? It's not ready for prime time. Trying to be nice with the host. Let's not get too combative. Well, they might be biased. We haven't, we can't be sure yet, guys. Well, we just need to play it out trying to be Mr. Nice Guy. Just the friendly game of cribbage. Cribbage Tim Scott. We don't have time for this. Just let's let it play out. What's happening to Donald Trump, let it play out. As you know, because you watch this show, but you do know that there's a very good chance, the likely scenario, that Donald Trump, an innocent man, is going to jail because we live in a banana republic. You know that, right? Now, maybe you're thinking, Jesse, you're being over the top. Jesse, that's too much. Okay, fine. Don't take my word for it. Take the word of his former attorney. So I think this is a, I think this obstruction case is a tight case. Uh, and yes, I do think he'll go to jail on it. I think he'll go to jail on it. Already been indicted in New York City. Indictment coming in Washington, D.C. Most likely an indictment coming in Georgia. And these communist-controlled areas will have communist juries, communist judges. And so while Donald Trump, an innocent man, gets prepped to go to prison, we just gotta let it play out, guys. Hey, let's not go too far. Hey, hey, we're, we're all friends here. We all want what's right, right? Go America. No time for that. No time for it. Tim Scott, I support his presidency in the year 1980, but it is not the year 1980. It is the year 2023, and Tim Scott doesn't know what time it is. Now, one last thing on this. Why do people do this? You're people all over the place today going off about why do people do this? Why do people do this? Why do people run for president? Tim Scott has no chance because he doesn't have a chance. He's got 3% of the vote. He's just there to be there. Why do people do this? Well, let's talk about something, just you and me. Let's talk about something. It may sound a little inside baseball-ish, but I think it'll help you understand. Let's focus on me for a moment. You know, obviously, I, I do TV. I have a radio show, The Jesse Kelly Show. I, I wrote a book. You know, let's focus on the book for a moment. I wrote a book, The Anti-Communist Manifesto, and I'm busy right now trying to sell it. Right? I want more people to buy the book so I can make money. Capitalists, okay? So let's say 100 people know who I am. I, obviously, the, it's a larger number than that, but let's say 100 people know who I am. If I jump in and run for president, here's what that means for me. One, I have no chance at being president, but it's not exactly a hardship. It's a year. Yeah, there's a lot of travel. First class, sometimes you fly on private planes. People buying you steak dinners, five-star hotels. Yeah, you gotta shake some hands and kiss some babies. But 
national debates. I'm up there on stage. I'm debating Trump. I'm debating DeSantis. Look at my great funny lines. By the time I'm done running for president, it's cost me nothing but time, but how many more people now know who I am and will buy my book? You see, if 100 people knew before I ran for president, now 1,000 people know and I sell 10 times as many books. That's life. It's branding. It's all about the brand. So don't be confused. Don't allow yourself to be confused. It's about branding. The bigger your brand, the more marketable you are. And it's more than just books, the more you're simply worth. Bigger book deals, better cable news deals. You get a senior fellowship at this think tank or that think tank. There's no downside. There's no downside. It's all about increasing the size of your brand. It's not about winning. Besides, at the end of it, you're Tim Scott, might find yourself as vice president. Vice president's the best job in politics. You have no responsibilities whatsoever. You live the life of a king. Secretary of state, something big like that. No downside. That's why all these dorks run for president when they have no chance. And all that may have made you uncomfortable, but I am right. We have a huge show for you. We still have some FBI talk. Do you wanna know what happened with Tucker? Chadwick Moore wrote the book on Tucker, has insight you have not heard anywhere before. We'll talk to Chadwick Moore. All that and so much more is still to come. Now, before we get to that, there's something else that's still to come. Financial troubles, to put it mildly, that's a very nice way to put what's coming. You remember when Peter Schiff came here, what was that, last week? Peter Schiff, the guy who predicted the 2008 recession when he stood on this show and he said, Great Depression Part Two is coming. So that's what I've been telling you. Well, Peter's one of these super knowledgeable guys. So I said, Peter, what? That's what I said. He said, I said, are you serious? And he said, no, I actually think it'll be worse than the first one. Remember all those food lines in the first Great Depression? You've seen the pictures. Get a three-month food kit. Emergency three-month food kit. Maybe help you and your family get by so you can get wherever you need to get to so you can outlast whatever comes. But My Patriot Supply has them for you. And right now, they're $200 off. You have to go to preparewithjessikelly.com. Everyone in your home needs one. You got four people in your home? Get four of them, all right? Preparewithjessikelly.com. We'll be back. I had five federal agents on my doorstep at 6.30 in the morning with long guns pointed at me and my seven children. They banged on the door and they said, open up. They did not even declare who they were that day. They didn't even ask me, uh, could you please open the door with the FBI? They just said, open up. I went to the door, I was up. I said, who is it? They said, it's the FBI, open up. So I opened up the door peacefully. I said, please stay calm, I have seven babies in here. They pointed M16 guns at me and my wife. My wife comes down and says, uh, do you have a warrant for his arrest? They said, we're taking him with or without a warrant. That doesn't sound much like a lawful law enforcement agency now, does it? Joining me now, Sean Carney, CEO and president of 40 Days for Life, author of the book, What to Say When. Sean, so it's really pretty obvious to me it has been for quite some time that the fbi has mobilized itself as the enforcement arm of the democratic party and part of that enforcement arm is going after catholics going after pro-lifers going after anybody they view as maybe having traditional values absolutely right unfortunately uh you're right and mark is is our volunteer we represent him legally um he had this incident happen that local uh, prosecutors didn't even press charges on and then uh the fbi raided his house out of nowhere tried to charge him with the face act and of course it was great because the jury deliberated in less than an hour and that was the end of it but it's not the end of it for uh our country because it's not just that the fbi and the doj appear to be bias this is an all-out bigotry and hatred of certain Americans, whether it be Catholics, whether it be pro-lifers, we, we get about one to two inquiries a week from the FBI as, as just pro-life volunteers uh, uh, across the country. They just uh, knocked on a lady's door who volunteers for us last week and, and asked her about her pro-life views. It's absolutely absurd. 
And we want the FBI kicking down the doors of drug lords and sex traffickers. Uh, we don't want them kicking down our doors simply because they disagree with our position on abortion or our faith. Sean, please elaborate on these inquiries because what you just said is going to be news to a lot of people. They're doing what now? Yes, so we hold peaceful vigils throughout the United States. And we've never had an issue with the DOJ. We've worked closely with the FBI for many years. But when they overturned Roe v. Wade, the FBI just started approaching our volunteers out of nowhere, saying that they wanted to talk to them. And of course, our volunteers are trained to, to know that you don't just go meet with the FBI unless you have a lawyer with you. Uh, so we're constantly arranging these meetings and they're, they're not substantive. It's just harassment. They're constantly reaching out to us saying, what are you doing? Why are you here? Uh, what are your views on abortion? All of these things. And it, the, the problem is that Merrick Garland has been drugging all these hearings and committees and he's been grilled and he's been insulted and he deserves all of that, but nothing has changed. Uh, okay, so that's basically one of the most frightening things I've heard. The Supreme Court makes a ruling that the Democrats don't like and they send their friends at the Cheka after the pro-life movement in response to that. Do I have that about right? Yes, and this is the problem. This sounds like some kind of pro-life or far-right you know, conspiracy theory, but it's actually happening. And that's the problem is that 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 statement that you just said is dead on accurate. And we have we have the timeline. We worked with the, the George W. Bush DOJ. No issue. Eight years of Obama. No issue with the DOJ. Four years of Trump. And I would say even the first 18 months of Biden, no issue whatsoever. Literally like a light switch, the Supreme Court overturns Roe and we're public enemy number one and pro-life people and, and Catholics and, and who else, you know, is on their list are now bad. And, and you didn't overturn Roe. I didn't overturn Roe v. Wade. The Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade, which is their job to do. And so now if you have a pro-life opinion, they're treating you like some kind of a, of a criminal. Okay, so Mark Houck, tell me about this, because a lot of people aren't familiar with the wonderful work you do. Mark Houck reads Bible verses, sings praise songs outside of these abortion clinics. What, it is, what is it you guys do? Explain it to people. Yeah, we hold peaceful 40-day vigils outside of abortion facilities, and we've done it nationally and internationally since 2007. Uh, we're the largest pro-life organization in the world. We're in uh, 1,500 cities in 64 different countries. We use free speech, and we've had no issue with that. Recently, we're obviously having to defend free speech. But Mark is one of our volunteers, one of our very committed volunteers. He's been going out and peacefully praying as part of 40 Days for Life uh, since 2007. He's had obviously a no issue uh, with law enforcement and he's harassed by this guy uh, in 2021. The guy comes after his son and he tells the guy to stop. The guy keeps coming after his son. So he shoves the guy and the guy calls the cops and the cops say, look, man, this is Philly. Like this is, this is nothing. The local prosecutor who is pro-abortion doesn't do anything and it goes away. And a year later, Mark is contacted by the FBI and told uh, that he's being charged with the FACE Act, which is a felony up to 11 years. It's absurd uh, because he was blocking the entrance of an abortion facility, which is also absurd. He was nowhere near it. And so he won that case big time, especially after the raid. The FBI ignored a letter that our lawyer sent to the FBI. They ignored his counsel. They completely botched this. They were embarrassed in court and they deserved it. <sighs> Sean, I saw Nancy Mace, who I don't care for, to be honest with you, but you're nicer than I am. You don't have to say that. But I saw her go on TV and she said this. Do you think that your party will face any sort of electoral blowback for these Bans. Do you think that your party will suffer at the polls? Well, we suffered in 2022, and I do believe we'll suffer in 2024 if we don't have a message that shows compassion to women, both for women's rights and the right to life. You can balance the two. Um, 
what? Is that right? What she said? Is that accurate? We should stop talking about abortion. We're losing on the issue. Should we change how we talk about abortion? You wrote a book on it. We're going to suffer. Let me tell you who's not suffering, who owned the abortion issue in the midterms. Governor Greg Abbott, where I live, awesome pro-life governor, $150 million allocated for women who choose life. Ron DeSantis, I think he's doing pretty good politically. Uh, he owned the abortion issue. Governor Kemp owned the abortion issue. Weak Republicans like her, who have no backbone and don't know how to articulate this, uh, are, will lose, will lose, absolutely. But this is the easiest issue right now, and we're winning. Um, the overturning of Roe was a historic day. It was one of the greatest days in American history, and I think many Republicans got scared. And they don't have the confidence to look into a camera and say, there is one side that takes this issue seriously, and that is the pro-life side. There is one side that is working to provide compassionate alternatives that are free of charge to women. There is one side who don't deny science and say that somehow we're sophisticated if we do a surgery on an unborn child or we prevent pregnant women from going on roller coasters and at the same time can also discard them in a barbaric surgery. Uh, the pro-life side is the pro-compassion side. It is the pro-science side. And the other side won't talk about it. We shouldn't join them. They have been screaming in support of infanticide and late-term abortion. And that is a political loser. The pro-life issue really can show the heart that Republicans have. Um, but instead, they just keep making excuses for it. And the ones who are owning it are winning. Amen. If people want to know how to talk about it, go pick up Sean's book, What to Say When. Sean, I appreciate you, brother. Thanks for having me. You bet. All right. Speaking of cultural issues, what's the date today? What is the date? May 22nd. That means we've only got like, I don't know how many days are in May, but we've got like a week left. And then Pride Month is here. The month of June. Used to be one of my favorite months. It's now ruined. And so let's do a little check-in on the U.S. of gay a week before we get to Pride Month. Because don't look, it's going to be Pride Year here before too long. They're not even waiting for June. We'll get to that in a moment. Before we get to that, let's get to this. Let's get to taking care of our dogs. Now, I'm not worried about you feeding, watering, exercising your dog. I know you take care of your dog. But what if you're failing your dog? What if I spent my whole life failing my dog? I did. I didn't know it, but I did. We always tried to get our dogs the best dog food we could afford. So we'd get them good food. I want my dog to be healthy. I want him to have the best food. But here's what's wild. All dog food, expensive or cheap, it's all dead. If you're giving your dog little brown hard things, that's dead. Things that are brown are dead. There's no nutrition in it. Your dog will live his whole life, wrap your mind around this, without ever getting nutrition. What would your health be? How much shorter would your life be if you lived your whole life with no nutrition? That's your dog. We're losing them before we have to lose them. Give your dog rough greens. It's a nutritional supplement, all natural. You pour it on your dog's food, all the vitamins, minerals, probiotics, omega oils. You will see a difference in your dog and quickly. Go to roughgreens.com slash jesse for a free jumpstart, jumpstart trial bag. All you pay for is the shipping roughgreens.com slash jesse or call them 833-33-MY-DOG. We'll be back. Hey, it's Tucker Carlson. At the most basic level, the news you consume is a lie, a lie of the stealthiest and most insidious kind. Facts have been withheld on purpose, along with proportion and perspective you are being manipulated. What's it like to work in a system like that? After more than 30 years in the middle of it, we could tell you stories. The best you can hope for in the news business at this point is the freedom to tell the fullest truth that you can. But there are always limits. And you know that if you bump up against those limits often enough, you will be fired for it. That was an interesting little monologue Tucker put on Twitter, wasn't it, after his separation from Fox? I say separation because still seem to be hashing out exactly what happened there. It was so odd. The most popular guy, and now he's gone. Speaking of popular guys who might have some insight on this, my friend Chadwick Moore, he wrote a book 
called Tucker. It is available July 18th. If you want a lot of inside baseball you can't get anywhere else, I would recommend you go pick it up, or pre-order it, I should say. You have to go to TuckerTheBook.com to do so. Okay, Chadwick, you were not only a guest on his final show, but you've seen the monologue that never aired, the one that was supposed to be for his next show. Do I have that right? What was that monologue about? That's correct. This was a monologue he wrote the morning of April 24th to go to air that evening. Uh, shortly after he sent the monologue to his producers, he got a phone call from Fox News President Suzanne Scott saying that they were pulling his show off the air. No explanation. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Uh, left him to speculate for weeks about what happened. He didn't know. But I have seen that monologue, and I know what he was planning to talk about on air. He was planning to talk a lot about January 6th, about Ray Epps. The previous evening, Ray Epps was on CBS's 48 Hours. They gave him the star treatment. He's a hero for to liberals for some reason, even though he's the only man caught on video encouraging violence that day on January 6th at the Capitol. Of course, he's never been arrested, never been charged with anything. He's been celebrated by people in power. Uh, but he planned to talk a lot about that. And and, and on uh, the Ray Epps' appearance on CBS, he was attacking Carlson's show. Also in the monologue, Carlson was going to talk about how people like AOC and others in government were trying to get his show taken off the air, ironically. Uh, earlier, uh, two days before that Saturday, AOC went on MSNBC and basically said Tucker Carlson and people like him should be not allowed to broadcast and should in fact be arrested. Uh, so that was kind of the gist of what he planned to talk about that day and uh, sent it off to his producers. Just shortly after that, he got the phone call. That is stunning. Okay, well, Chadwick, I've never known. I mean, we've swapped a couple texts since then, but I've never known. I haven't asked. I didn't really want to speculate, and I don't want to speculate now. Why did it happen? But I will tell you, I find it to be the oddest thing in the world because normally... If you have the number one show, you can dance naked in Times Square and you'll still be just fine because you make the company so much money. So I don't want to speculate now, but you think you know what the reason was, right? What, what do you think? So my sources who have intimate knowledge of the situation, multiple sources, have said to me that the reason they can say with great assurance that he was taken off the air is that it was a condition in the agreement with Dominion in their settlement with Fox News. Uh, Dominion has denied this. And uh, But what I've uh, heard from these sources, who again, I have no reason to believe that they don't know what's going on or that they're lying, is that this agreement was reached just moments before they were set to go to trial and Fox News desperately did not want to go to trial, even though Fox felt they would win if they went to trial. They didn't want to go because they didn't want Rupert Murdoch to testify. That's what everyone has said to me. So they reached this agreement just moments before that happened. Uh, and if that's true, that would mean that there's a tiny group of investors or maybe just one person on the board of the private equity firm that owns Dominion and that just wanted him pulled off the air for whatever reason. And this is, of course, on the eve of a presidential election. Um, so this is unprecedented. I talked to, to, to if it's true, it's unprecedented. I've talked to um, media lawyers who work kind of deal with the big media companies all the time. They've been doing this for 40 years. They also believe this to be the case. And they said that it's totally unprecedented. They've never heard of anything like it. Okay, so now let, let me just see if I can hash this out. So uh, doesn't this set, and I'm not a freaking legal expert here, doesn't this set a precedent for if you don't like, if, if you're a major corporation, you don't like something some organization, uh, some media outlet is saying, you can simply lay out the programming you would like to see removed from the network? Do, do, do the leftists in this country see the precedent that kind of thing sets? Oh, yeah. Well, do they see any of the precedents that they themselves set? No, they don't. Yeah. They're too, they're too busy, uh, uh, you know, enjoying their uh, their their power, enjoying the power they receive from it until it gets turned on them. But um, it is a dangerous, frightening, terrifying precedent that this is the case. You know, it's basically you've got just some guy or some group of guys that is deciding what millions of Americans are allowed to watch on television. Uh, Tucker Carlson was, of course, the strongest vector in this country for Trumpism. And there are a lot of people in this country, powerful people who are very uh, have a vested interest in who gets the job of president. It's the most important job in the world. And there are people who will do anything to have control over who gets that job or who does not get that job. And, uh, you know, this is just speculating if this is the case. I can't really think of any other reason why uh, someone would want Tucker Carlson off the air. Um, he, of course, 
did not push on his show the theory that the Dominion voting system was rigged. In fact, he pushed back against it stronger than anyone else really at Fox. He had Sidney Powell on in kind of an epic clip where he really took her to task. Um, he clearly on the air did not believe her and um, and let it be known. So um, so he, there were other voices at Fox who, who still have shows on the air. Again, Fox, uh, Tucker's not fired from Fox. As we're talking right now, he's still an employee of Fox News. They simply canceled his show. Uh, so he's still getting a paycheck. He's still under contract. Uh, and there are other people who are still on the air at Fox who pushed the Dominion theory with uh, a lot more gusto than Tucker Carlson did. So they're paying Tucker God only knows how much money to not do a show. Man, congratulations. I got to text him a thumbs up. Okay, let's move <laughs> off of the Tucker stuff for a moment and talk about something that I consider probably the biggest thing out there, the federal government, every aspect of it, every part of it, turning against the American people. I saw this jaw dropper from the FDA today. Are you prepared? The internet is going down later this week. It's gonna be crazy. Find out more below. The internet is going down later this week. The internet is, is going down later The real truth the government refuses to tell you. Previous account ban for sharing the truth. Wait a minute, this is misinformation. You may be spreading misinformation unintentionally. Confirm the credibility of a source before contributing to the conversation. To see how FDA is addressing misinformation, check out our rumor control webpage. Wow. Uh, Ch Chadwick, <laughs> the, le the level of corruption and nefariousness with our institutions in this country has reached such a level that uh, I don't think many normie Americans, I call them normie norms, I don't think they fully grasped just how much trouble we're in. <laughs> right. The FDA is putting that out there. That's interesting. What, uh -huh. what would the FDA be worried about misinformation? I don't know. Maybe I'm doing with like pharmaceutical companies. Who knows? Uh, that is really hilarious and surprising. Um, and also, you know, it, it, what they're, the Biden administration's, his uh, ministry of truth failed. So now this is the, the route that they're taking, doing PSA about misinformation uh it kind of makes misinformation sound sexy honestly uh who wants to listen to what the <laughs> fda is saying <laughs> chadwick i want people to go buy his book well, you gotta go pre-order his book called tucker thank you my brother you come back soon thanks man always a pleasure all right we have a very very special almost almost a sacred edition of lighten the mood next before we get to that, let's get to something actually fairly serious. Before we laugh and roll our eyes, let's get to something serious. Look, we really are heading into some very, very rocky economic times. And Lord willing, it's not that bad that we get through it. Obviously, there are going to be some bumps in the road, and you and I will chop away, and we'll get through it, and then, then we'll keep marching on. But let me ask you something. Are you sure your children are never going to see an epic collapse, their children after them? When I tell you to get precious metals, gold or silver in your physical possession, understand that I'm telling you to purchase something that never goes bad. It never goes stale. The bubble never pops on gold. It's always had incredible worth and always will. That's security for you. Hopefully you don't need it. Security for your children. Hopefully they don't need it. Their children. Hopefully they don't need it. But someone's going to need it. Be the one that saves your family. Call Oxford Gold and get some financial protection. They'll also get it in your 401k and IRA. 833-995-GOLD. That's the legacy to pass down. I protected my family. 833-995-GOLD. We'll be back. You're not very nice people. And I don't know why, because I am so nice. But everyone's mean to me. And I'll explain in just a moment for our light in the mood. Before we, get, before we get to all that, let's get to this. Let's get to the timeshare you think you're stuck in. Don't feel stupid. When I talk to people who, who bought a timeshare and then they went out and then they find out they can't get out, they end up feeling like fools. Oh, Jesse, I should have read the contract. Nobody reads all 100 pages of that fine print garbage. Nobody does. Nobody. Lawyers don't read that. You're not stuck, though. Lone Star Transfer they'll get you out. They not only will get you out, they guarantee it. They guarantee it in writing and they give you a specific time frame. You're not stuck. 
You don't have to pay those annual fees every year. You don't have to pay the special assessments. You're one, co one phone call away from freedom. Call 844-310-2646, all right? 844-310-2646. Which brings me to you. The wife yelled at me this weekend. But you know why? We were driving around after church yesterday. We were driving. We went out and got some crawfish, me, her, and the boys, me and my sons. We were driving home. And one of my sons in the back seat was talking about something, and he said the word literally. He says, literally the worst thing. And you know how much I hate that word, how much it has destroyed the English language. Everyone uses it all the time. Literally this, it's literally, literally, literally. It's awful. So he said the word literally. And before I could say anything, she said, literally? And then she glared at me, and she said, you see what you've done to me? You've done this. Now I hear it everywhere. And I realized that that's what I've done, that now everyone hears it everywhere. But you could have been nice to me about it. And instead, my producer uh, last week went to the iTunes reviews for my radio show. And he just goes, checks them out from time to time. He just thinks it's fun. He thinks it's funny. And he sent them to me. Do you want to hear what you've done to the reviews on my show, The Jesse Kelly Show? This is what you've done. I hate you guys. This five-star review is titled, Literally the Best. <laughs> Jesse is the best podcast host in the business, literally. He is also literally the best-looking pod podcast host around. Oh, wait, there's more. This one's titled, Literally My Favorite Show. Jesse pulls no punches and literally has me cracking up daily. You know who's not cracking up? Me. The next one says, I literally love this show so much. Jesse is literally the best. I'm literally giving this podcast five stars. On and on and on it goes. All I do is show up here and be nice to you all day long. And this is the thanks I get. I'll see you tomorrow. Literally. <laughs>